All right. Proverbs tonight, chapter 1. <laughs> now, we're not going backwards. I just want to introduce the topic uh, that I want to preach to you about tonight. Um, we went through the first nine chapters and sort of did a section by section, and it was instruction after instruction. The writer of Proverbs, my son, my son, here, here, here. Hear the instruction. And, um, and, but then when you come to chapter 10, these Proverbs of Solomon, folks, there are just hundreds of topics that you can preach on. I mean, the verses stand alone. They're, they're, they're contrasting verses. One of them will pre present a positive side, and the, the end of the verse will present the negative side. You could, you could literally take one verse and... You could preach series of messages on. And uh, so, remember what we preached on last week? Anger? Yeah. And uh, uh, I even give you all an opportunity last week to say, what makes you angry? And then I preached on why we shouldn't be angry. <laughs> and so, uh, tonight, another topic that I want to touch on and Literally, folks, it begins in the first chapter and goes all the way through uh, the book of Proverbs. Matter of fact, it's probably one of the main topics of the book of Proverbs. And so I'll introduce uh, this topic to you. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we'll look at just a little bit of what the Bible says about it. And I want you to look in verse 7. And the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And here's the counterpart to that. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And I want to speak to you tonight on this topic of the fool. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'd help me tonight, uh, Lord, that you'd give me understanding as I stand up here and speak, and that you'd give us all understanding heart about this area of, of fools and foolishness. Instruct us and teach us, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So the Bible says, but fools despise wisdom, <coughs> excuse me, and instruction. So folks, don't despise wisdom and instruction because that's foolish. So we think about the fool. Surely that's the lost man, right? <laughs> well, sometimes it is. I, I, I spoke about Job's wife. I, was that last Wednesday when I talked about Job's wife? And I ask you, how many of you thought Job's wife was, was a foolish woman? Uh, Job says, well, you, you speak as one of the foolish. And, um, uh, well, yeah, yeah, that's what, it, but no, I don't, see, you speak as. But Job didn't say she was a fool. Sometimes, folks, you and I act foolish. You ever did anything foolish? Two of us, three or four of us? Yeah. If we're honest, we all have done foolish things. Doesn't mean you're unsaved. Just means you did something that wasn't very wise. The fool runs through um, um, all through the book. It begins in verse one. It goes to the end of the book. <clears throat> uh, I think there's a threefold objective here. First, the objective is to warn young people, not just young people, but anybody, to warn them away from the path of the foolish. Listen, don't walk down that path. It leads to destruction. I believe the second objective is to show the unsaved fool his character and bring him to conviction that he might be saved. And then the third objective, I believe, is to show God's people the ways of foolishness. And when you and I walk in those ways to repent of them and get right with the Lord. 
And so there's a three, I think there's a threefold objective there. I believe it's part of the growing process uh, as you and I grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ to be less foolish. Folks, you and I can. We, we can do foolish things. We can say foolish things. We can do foolish things. But, uh, but, but, but Christ, the Scriptures, they'll warn us. They'll teach us. They'll instruct us away from those things. And when we see those characteristics in our life, we ought to be quick to confess them as sin and ask God to forgive us and purge our life from those foolish tendencies. I'll talk tonight, number one, I only got two points, but I got a few sub points to go along with it. But number one, I want to look at the fool's character. The fool's character. Now look at, I've got probably nine characteristics of a fool tonight. We'll look at the scripture and we'll see each one of them uh, from the scripture. But a fool doesn't necessarily have to have all nine of those characteristics in his life. He can have just one of them. And so if we see one of those characteristics in our life as a believer, we ought to be quick to confess it and, and get it right uh, with the Lord. And so the, the first one that I want to look at tonight, and I've already talked about it a little bit, a foolish person is proud and doesn't receive instruction. He's proud and he will not receive instruction. Verse 7, the verse that we read. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1 and verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. I'm going to read you a few of these verses then I'll go back and say a thing or two about them as we go along. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 8. The wise in heart will receive commandments. But a pratting fool shall fall. Now y'all know what a pratting fool is, right? Okay, a pratting fool. It's just someone that doesn't know how to control his tongue. There's no weight to what he says. He just talks and talks and talks. And if you let him talk long enough, he'll show you that he's a fool. But a pratting fool is what that's talking about. He shall fall. Proverbs 12 and verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Everybody else may know he's wrong, but you can't tell him he's wrong. He's right in his own eyes. Proverbs 15, 5. A fool despiseth his father's instruction. And, and so here again, we, got, we have a fool despising and rejecting instruction. Uh, Proverbs 17 and verse 10, a reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes of fool. Well, that's an instructive verse right there. You reprove a wise man and he'll receive it. You know, I try to, <clears throat> excuse me, in my own life, somebody will come to me and they may tell me something that I don't like. And I may not agree with it, but I try to step back. I try to, I try to step back and take an inventory of my life to see if what they're saying is true or not. It may be, it may not. And if it is true, then I want to receive that instruction. If it's not true, then okay, it's not true. But I need, I ought to stand back and just, because you know what? Y'all know what a blind spot is? Everybody knows what a blind spot is. When you're driving, what's a blind spot? You ever been driving down the road and you look back and you didn't see anything and you start to move over and all of a sudden somebody just lays down on the horn and you look and boy, somebody's in that neck. They're right there. They're in that blind spot. You couldn't see it. Folks, we have blind spots in our life. And we may not see what somebody else is telling us. I believe it's what he's talking about. A reproof entereth more into a wise man. Than a hundred stripes of fool. Listen, you can't beat sense into a fool. But a wise man will receive instruction. 
He says in Proverbs 23 and verse 9, Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdoms of thy words. You know what, folks? It comes to a point. Just it just comes to a point when you've got a foolish person. You've you've tried to talk to them, and and they won't listen to you. The Bible says, "Listen, speak not in the ears of a fool, because he's going to despise the wisdom of your words." Um, I had a Bible college professor one time, very wise professor, and he broke this down. He said, "There's." And if you go through Proverbs, you'll see this. And I've studied it, and I think he's pretty much, I think he's right. He says you can break uh, groups of people into three groups when you look at, especially Proverbs. Wise, simple, and fools. There's about uh, 10% wise. There's about 10% fools. And there's about 80% simple. And so you got the wise and, and, and then the fools and the simple there in between. And a simple person is just a person that's open. He's open like a door. He's, he's like a person that anything that comes down the road, it can enter right into him. Now the thing is, you don't have to stay simple. You can be wise. You can receive the instruction of the wise and you become one of the wise. You don't have to stay like the simple. But, but I find that as I read Proverbs to be true. Um, so, folks, be wise. Receive instruction. The fool won't do it. He won't hear it. It's one of his chief characteristics of a fool is that he will not humble himself and receive instruction. Anybody know anybody like that? We probably all do. We've probably been that way ourselves at times. But if we find that in our lives, listen, uh, uh, confess it to the Lord. Don't be proud. Don't be self-centered. It's a result of pride in our life. Our tongue wants to speak proudly in Proverbs 14, 3. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. He's boastful. He's full of self-importance. You ever known somebody just thought that they were just so important? <laughs> um, I always like to say, you know, you take anybody, take anybody out. It's like putting your, putting your finger in a bucket of water and pouring it out. You can't even tell it's gone. But listen, hey, look at folks, when I'm gone, there'll be somebody to replace me. When you're gone, there'll be somebody that'll replace you. And, you know, just don't be so self-absorbed that you just think that you're just the end-all and be-all. Uh, what is in the fool's heart will come out of his mouth. In Proverbs 14, verse 33, Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding. But here's the contrast to that. But that which is in the midst of a fool is made known. How is it made known? He's going to tell you. If you listen, he'll let you know. A foolish person trusts in his own heart. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. What the Bible says. Um, and we've talked about that before. Yeah, but we don't know our own hearts. You, we hear people say that all the time. Oh, if I know my heart. I, you don't know your heart. It's what the Bible says. A foolish person says, I make my own decision. I don't need anyone to tell me what to do. You get the, the young man in, in his home and he's tired of his mom and his dad's instruction. And he says, I'm going to go out and join the Marines. I'm tired of people telling me what to do. See how that works out for you. But a foolish person, he speaks his mind quickly. That's the second thing. A, a characteristic a foolish person speaks his mind quickly and without due thought in Proverbs 15 2 the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright but a mouth of a fool poureth out foolishness I, I've got a, I've got a say and I, I like to say I, I say it at my house all the time I used to say a lot when my kids were there and now it's just faith so I, I don't see the one I got to practice it on anymore <laughs> 
I just say, look, at when you've run out of things to say, what's the best thing you can do? Shut up. Quit talking. When you've run out of things to say, just stop talking. Fools pour out foolishness. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. I'll just give him a piece of my mind. Well, you ain't got a whole lot of it to give. So you see a wise person, he holds it back. But a fool, he just... Blah, 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 blah. So don't be like the foolish. He's not interested in learning wisdom. He only wants to speak what's in his heart. And listen, folks, if we begin to speak what's in our heart, it'll... Uh, You'll let everybody know what's in your heart. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. I'll give you a third thing. A foolish person loves mischief and foolishness. It's his sport. It's his joy. It's his delight to act foolishly. In Proverbs 10 and verse 23, it is a sport to a fool to do mischief. Um, now, I, you know, folks, I, I like to have a good time. I do. I like to joke and, and carry on. And my wife tells me, says, she says, Roland, you're not good at it. And she's right. I'm not. She says, every time you try to joke and, and, and have mischief and stuff, you, all, you end up hurting somebody every time you do it. And so... It's a good thing for me not just get involved with it. And, uh, but I've tried to counsel so many people. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is a man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I just in sport? I was just kidding. Listen, folks, when we get into kidding, we get into mischief and folly, or we think it's funny. I could tell a joke about Alan. And we could all laugh about it. And Alan might even laugh about it. But inside, I might have just took a dart and pierced his heart. That's a foolish thing to do, isn't it? Alan's my friend. He's a deacon in this church. He's a respected member. I believe he loves the Lord. And why would I do something like that to him? And so think about that, folks. The next time we want to get into foolishness and folly, remember what the Bible says about it. Proverbs 15, 21. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. See, foolishness and wisdom. In, in just about every situation, folks, you and I are going to have an opportunity to act foolishly or act wisely. And uh, you can tell the fool, it's, it's evident how he spends his time. Just listen to how he, uh, look at how he spends his money. Uh, look at who he chooses to be his friends. And if I, I've, I've said for years, you, you give me 15, 20 minutes with somebody, I can pretty much tell you what they are if we sit down and talk very long. They're going to tell you what the desires of their hearts are. They're going to tell you what the joy in their life is. Just, just listen. And... It won't be hard to tell. Here's another thing, number four. And we'll, I'll try to finish this up. I've got a lot to go. A foolish person gets angry quickly. A fool's wrath is presently known. But a prudent man covereth shame. You get angry quickly? If you do, you're acting like a foolish person. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the things that make me more angry than anything is to be driving down the road and somebody come in and cut me off and there's nobody behind me and they go a block and they turn. And I just, I'm thinking, mm. y'all, y'all, yeah, anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's sort of foolish, isn't it? That's where road rage comes from. And so you and I ought not be caught up in road rage. Uh, but he, he don't know how to control his anger. His anger controls him. That's a foolish person. Whatever he feels, he says. On the other hand, a wise person, he'll hold his peace. He won't let his anger destroy him or control him. 
A fifth thing, a fifth thing, a foolish person doesn't depart from evil. Look in Proverbs chapter 13. I'll give you a couple of verses here to look up. I've been reading them all to you, quoting them to you, but let's look up a few. Proverbs 13, look at verse uh, 19, uh, if you would. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but admonition to fools to depart from evil. But it, uh, uh, excuse me, but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. This fool gets caught up in his foolishness, and he don't want to leave it. He enjoys it. And so a fool doesn't want to depart from evil. A wise person, when he's confronted with his foolishness, he says, oh, oh yeah, I see that. And he departs from it. A foolish person makes a mock at sin. Look at chapter 14, verse uh, 9, if you would. The Bible says fools make a mock at sin. They make a mock at sin. It's something to, to joke about. It's something to play with. Listen, folks, if you play with sin, it's going to bite you. And it's a foolish person that mocks at sin. Number seven, a foolish person despises his mother. Look at verse 20, chapter 15, verse 20. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. I'll tell you what, there's a lot to be said about parent-child relationship. And so when, what, what age does that end? Listen, in our Western culture, we think it's 18 years old. I don't know many 18 years old, 18 year olds that has the wisdom enough to go out and make it on their own yet. They might be close, but in, in, the, in the Bible, the culture, listen, that instruction of a father and mother, you take it to the grave with you, folks. Honor your father and your mother. But a fool won't do that. He won't do that. He doesn't honor his mother. doesn't honor his father. He looks down at them and belittles them. Here's number eight. Almost done. But I'm going to make it. A foolish person doesn't learn from trouble and correction. A foolish person doesn't learn from trouble and correction. Proverbs 17, 10. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes a fool. We've already talked about that verse there. And again, you, you can't beat wisdom into a fool. It, you just, he just not, he, he's not going to learn from correction. I'll give you the last one and we'll close with this one. A foolish person loves strife. Proverbs 20 and verse 3. It is honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. He doesn't care about peacemaking. It's not what's on his agenda. He's in, he enjoys strife and confrontation. And if it's not going on, he wants to stir it up. That's what a fool does. He'll stir it up. He feeds on backbiting and slandering. Anything that he can do to stir up strife, that's what he's happy doing. And um, the Lord can put him in his school of affliction and trouble, and he still won't learn from it. Well, not much hope for a fool, is it? I said not much hope. There is hope. He can be saved. He can be convicted of his sin. He can trust Christ as his Savior. And he can become wise. It's not impossible for a fool to become wise. It's very difficult because he don't want to receive instruction. But the conviction of the Spirit can do its work. So, just a few things. There's so much more. And, and I could have said and more verses we could have looked at. If you want to know more about the fool, just, just read Proverbs. And every time the fool is mentioned, take a pen and write it down. And uh, you, you'll, you'll waste, you'll use some ink. But uh, folks, do we have foolish tendencies in our life? If we do, if God spoke into our heart, then we ought to confess it. Put it under the blood of Christ. 
forsake it and get up and go on in the wisdom that God gives to us. Our Father, we thank you for your instruction tonight on the fool. Father, I pray that you would show us the foolishness in our own lives tonight. And I pray, Father, we would come, confess it to you, get up and go on and walk like a wise man led by the Spirit of the Lord. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.